What if I told you there's a protocol that's about to become as important to AI as HTTP was to the internet, and that you could start building with it today using Spring AI? Today, 4 million developers have built with OpenAI. More than 800 people use ChatGPT every week, and we process over 6 billion tokens per minute on the API, thanks to all of you. AI has gone from something people build, play with to something people build with every day. I'm talking about Model Context Protocol, or MCP. This protocol isn't even a year old, but it's already powering ChatGPT's new apps SDK, which can get you in front of over 800 million weekly users. OpenAI, Anthropic, and every major AI player out there is betting on this to become the standard for how AI systems connect data and tools. Think about it. Instead of building custom integrations for Claude, then rebuilding them for ChatGPT, then rebuilding them again for the next LLM, you build once with MCP and it works everywhere. This is the App Store moment for AI, and it's happening right now. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to exactly how to build your own MCP server using the latest version of Spring AI. And here's the best part. If you know Spring, you already have everything you need. No new stack to learn, no complex setup, just your existing Java skills become your superpower in this AI revolution. By the end of this video, you'll have a working MCP server that can connect to any compatible LLM. While everyone else is still building a bunch of basic chatbots, you'll be building the infrastructure layer that all AI systems will depend on. So let's stop talking about the future and start building it. Let me show you just how simple Spring AI makes this. All right, to get started, you'll want to head over to the Spring AI reference documentation. Now, at the time of the recording, it is the current version is 1.0.3. Some of the stuff, actually most of the stuff I'm going to talk about is in a latest version, which you can switch to in the documentation by going here, going to preview, and then 1.1.0 milestone 3. You can still build MCP servers with the current version, but you have to define tool callbacks and there's a little bit more ceremony involved. This is uh, this new version makes it incredibly easy to do. So if you want to read through the documentation, MCP server, you can go in and look at all of the annotations that you can use and we'll talk through uh, at least a couple of them today. So there's that. Let's talk about the problem at hand. If I go over to Claude and I ask it a question about information it has not been trained on. So like my personal YouTube channel, maybe it collected data on that up to a certain point, but it can't get access to that. So let's go ahead and ask it, what are Dan Vega's last three YouTube videos? right? It's not trained on this data, so it's immediately going to look for uh, some tools that can help it do that. One of which that it has access to is searching the web. So it's going to search the web. It's going to see if it can find my last three YouTube videos. It's going to fall a little bit short on this. It's going to do some searching on YouTube. It's going to look at my channel and it's just going to kind of, uh, yeah, see, it failed to fetch from my YouTube channel. So um, let's check Dan Vega's website to see if he has videos there. I don't. Um, so it's going to do a little bit more searching. At the end of the day, it's going to give us an answer, but it's not the answer we're looking for, right? Here are some of the videos Dan creates. Um, here are some things he talks about, but not answering the specific question that we want. So I'm going to show you just a simple step. We're going to create a very basic MCP server, and then I'll leave you at the end with like the full boom project that I put together for this in case you're interested in looking at an MCP server, a real one that I kind of built for the public. So let's go over to start.spring.io. We're going to create a new project called dev.danvega. We'll just call this Vega. And I'm going to use Java 25, and then we're going to pick a couple of dependencies. When it comes to building MCP servers, there are some different transports. There's standard input output, if I want to run it on my local machine. There's SSE, and now there's streamable HTTP. I'm going to build an HTTP server, so I'm going to bring in the web support. And then if I look for MCP, you can build both an MCP server and an MCP client. Today, we're going to build an MCP server. With that, I'll hit the generate button. I'll download a zip. I'll open it up in my favorite ID, which is IntelliJ. You can open it up in whatever text editor ID you're most proficient in. With that, let's write some code. All right, so we are going to come in here. I'm just going to rename this to application. 
And yes, please rename that test too. And the first thing we're do is going to set up some configuration. Now, the good thing about this is no matter what transport you're using, standard data now, SSE, streamable HTTP, the code remains the same. The only difference is the configuration that we're going to set up. So we're going to set up a couple of different basic properties. So there's one for MCP server. Um, we want name. So this is going to be Vega OS. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set a version. So Spring AI MCP version. We'll just call this 0.1.1 .1 for now. And then we're going to set up some uh, properties that are specific to the MCP server configuration. And in our case, uh, streamable HTTP. So I'm just going to paste those in here. We have a protocol. Again, this can be um, standard in and out, uh, SSE or streamable. We are setting standard in and out to false because by default it's true. And then we are defining that this is a synchronous server. You can use sync or async. Okay, so with our configuration set up, now we can start to build out our application. In this case, it's going to be really simple. We're building just a simple app here today to get the basics. And then uh, we'll, we'll build some more um, kind of in-depth ones in the future. So I want to create a new uh, Java class. And I'm going to call this the Vega Tools. All right. The nice thing here, again, is this is just a Spring application. If you've built Spring applications before, this is all going to look pretty familiar to you. So I'm going to have a component. I may do some logging. So I'll create a logger. I have a quick uh, IntelliJ Live template for this. And then what I want to do is I want to create a tool. So again, when it comes to uh, building MCP servers, uh, the things that we can make available in the server are tools, resources, and prompts. Now, tools get the most attention because they are what help us provide context or call out to some external service and get some data or perform some action. But there are also cases where resources are nice, being able to provide prompt templates to our users are nice. Uh, but today we'll just cover tools. So I want a tool that is just going to return a string and we'll call this get latest videos. Right. Um, so what we want to do is we want to return some static data in this case. Again, this is a you know, walk before we can run. We're just going to grab some sta static data here. I'm going to call this videos and we'll make that and we'll just have some uh, text that we return. Now, what we could do is we could create some JSON data. We could put this, uh, read this file of JSON data in. We could even take this a step further, which I've done in my actual uh, DBAAS service, which is reach out to the YouTube API to get the data. But again, let's take this one step at a time. Let's just hard code some data in here, and then we'll go ahead and return videos. All right. So now we've returned that. Great. So now we have some context that if we gave this to the LLM, they would be able to use this or say, invoke that tool, get me those results, and I can use that in answering uh, this particular question. Now, the way that we do this in Spring AI and in the newest version is by using the at MCP tool annotation, which we don't have access to yet because we need to change one thing. So we're going to come in here and we're going to tell Spring that we're going to use the latest version, which is milestone 3, 1.1.0. Now, if we do that, we should be have access to MCP tool and we're going to give it a name and we'll just say Vega latest videos. And the description becomes important because what happens is the large language model will get the prompt and go, I can't answer that. Are there any tools that can answer this query? And it looks through the list of tools and the descriptions. And based on the description, it will go, oh, I do see you have a tool that can help me. I'm going to send this back to you. You invoke that code and then return that result to me and I can answer this query. So this description becomes important. You don't want it short. You don't want it too long. But you want to be uh, descriptive of what this particular tool does. So I will return 
Dan Vega's last three videos. And again, this could be um, any number of. So we can also use tool parameters. So we can say at MCP tool param. And this param could be an integer of a limit. And instead of um, returning the last three videos, we could say 10. Again, if I had a real data source here, then we would do something like that. But I'm not going to here. So I will return Dan Vega's last three videos. So we have everything that we think we need, right? So we can uh, go ahead and manually test this. We're pretty sure this is just going to return a string back. Uh, but again, we're in the confines of a normal Spring application, so we could write a test against this to make sure this brought back what we thought it was going to bring back. In this case, I also want to test this in some type of tool before I go off and use it somewhere like in Claude, right? So what I'm going to do is I am going to run this application. Let's make sure it starts, and it does. And what I'm going to do is use something called the MCP inspector. So I can run this using this command here. If you want to learn more about it, head over to modelcontextprotocol.io. So I'm going to run this, and it's going to open up in a tab. And here we are. So we have different transport types, as I mentioned. We are testing ours is a streamable HTTP. So what we want to do is we want to hit localhost and then the port. In this case, I'm running on the default port of 8080 and slash MCP. That's important. If you don't use that, it won't connect. So if you had authentication, you can do some authentication here. We'll cover that in a future video. Uh, but at this point, I just want to connect to it. And once you connect, you can see some logging down here. It says, oh, hey, I got this back from the server. Here are the capabilities. When tools change, I'll get updated about them. Here's the server info. So the name is Vega OS, and the version is that. Now we can go into tools and say list all of the tools available in this MCP server. So here they are. And I can go ahead and click on that, run that tool, and I see I get that string back. So how does that help us when we are using something like Claude? Now I can go ahead and take this and publish this MCP server to the web. And uh, if it was somewhere accessible on the web, I can go ahead and use it in Claude AI or even ChatGPT. You can also use something like Cloudflare tunneling, where you kind of get like a public URL that maps to your local host 8080 in this case. Um, but I'm going to show you the kind of end result of this, which is the um, Dan Vega as a service, which I built. If you want to go over on my website and go down and click on MCP, this is just a big continuation of what we just saw. And again, it, I don't think anybody's clamoring for this MCP server, but it's really just to kind of show off how you could build MCP servers in Spring. So a little bit of info on it. Here are all the things that this MCP server supports. Um, so you can search my YouTube videos, blog posts, newsletter, um, uh, podcasts, uh, when am I speaking next, that kind of thing. And the way that you do it is uh, whatever tool that you're using, so it could be like Claude Desktop or uh, ChatGPT or Claude, this is the URL that you want to use. And the biggest thing is uh, if you want to check out the source code for this, you can come over here. And if we look at this, if we go into like source, main, Java, if you look under tools, there's something for like YouTube. Here's a YouTube tool. And to get the most recent videos, so we do use that MCP tool param, we can retrieve like 10. How does it get it? It uses the YouTube service, which actually uses the YouTube API to reach out and grab the latest three videos. So this is cool. Now, if you go over to something like Claude, let's do a new chat. I am going to go under tools, and I've set up a new connector here. So connectors are MCP servers, basically. And uh, these are the tools available to Claude. So when you do something like we did before, it has the ability to search the web because we've enabled that connector. If you wanted to hook it up to something like Gmail or your calendar, that would work as well.
I have set up Dan Vega as a service and it has all of these tools available. Sometimes I like to be a little bit more explicit in this, but I can say uh, using Dan Vega's MCP server, DBES, what are Dan's latest videos? So we're just kind of being explicit there. Most of the time you don't have to do that. Um, just for the sake of demo, I am. So you see that it invokes a tool instead of searching the web. Claude wants to use YouTube Get Latest Videos. So I'll go ahead and allow that. And um, this is going to be the result of that call. So here are the last three videos. We get all of that data back and this is how it wants to present it. It presents it um, in a list. Oh, I said latest. So if you remember, if we were looking at the code, it was actually the last 10. If I said three, it would have passed the, the correct three parameter. So now you can come on here and click this and you would be able to see um, that video over on YouTube. Again, this is a silly example. I know, I know, I know, I know the comments are coming. But just an example of how I kind of broke this up into different tools. If you want to get some information about the podcast, if you're not... If you're not listening to the podcast, a Spring Offs Hours, great podcast. Go ahead and take a listen. Um, but I'm uh, using the Transistor FM API, which where all of our podcast episodes are hosted. And I'm just using a tool to go out and get that. So um, I thought that was pretty cool. And then, yeah, you can do this over on ChatGPT as well. You can enable developer mode and you can add MCP servers here. So I have one for that. Uh, what are Dan's latest podcast episodes? So let's see how it does there. Hopefully it doesn't go search the web. We want it to invoke that tool. So it's looking for available tools. Oh, I see I have one to get podcast episodes. So I'll do that and it'll confirm and it will go out and make that call, get all of that data, return that back from the MCP server and here are the latest episodes. Java 25 with Billy Corando, Groovy Google and Gemini with Guillaume LaForge. Uh, some great episodes there. So you can go ahead and see that. And there you have it, a fully functional MCP server built with Spring AI in just a few minutes. We've gone from zero to production ready server that can connect to Claude, ChatGPT, and any future LLM that supports MCP. Remember what I said at the beginning, this protocol is the future of AI integration. You're not just learning another framework here, you're positioning yourself at the ground floor of what's about to become the standard for how every AI application connects to the world. While others are still trying to figure out what MCP even is, you're already building with it. The code from today's video is in the description below. Take it, extend it, build something amazing with it. And if you do build something cool, drop it in the comments below. I'd love to see what you create. The AI infrastructure of tomorrow is being built today and you are now part of it. Let's go build the future. As always, friends, if you learned something new today and had some fun doing so, do me a big favor, leave me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and as always, happy coding. Yeah, yeah, yeah.